Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you all again here again on another Twinkle Tip Friday and we hope you have had a fantastic week and you're ready for the weekend. Hey, it's setup season. It's crazy time. You're probably behind just like everybody else's. God knows I'm behind because I don't have time to do my own stuff, but I have a tip that is going to help you put one prop on two different controllers and be able to use controller upload to do it. Stay tuned, we'll get right to it. Well, we're back again, guys, and I really wanted to do this lesson because it was an idea that, um, well, it's a question that gets asked frequently enough, and I was actually talking to one of the sequencers the other last night about this, and I thought this is a great idea for a Twinkle Tip Friday video so that you can see how to split up a prop between certain number of ports on one controller to another controller. So I want to share with you how you can do this with, let's say, a pretty large matrix that has a lot of outputs. So what you see on the screen above me, beside me, is uh, you see a couple props, and some of these props are individual props that have outputs of one count or multiple outputs. So what I want to do is I want to start um, putting these on the controller. So what you have to imagine is your situation, and I've got two controllers here. They're sitting right here. I've got a Falcon F16 V5 down on the bottom, and then on the top here I have hooked up this is a uh, Genius 16 controller. So two different controllers set up in the network. And, and you can see down here in the bottom right, the little uh, light is lit up green. And I've got a Falcon V5 and a Genius uh, 16 controller. We're going to start assigning these props over to our first eight outputs. So this is our first year. Uh, our first year we have the fan flake arch, this uh, high resolution row, uh, bow wreath uh, combo, uh, we have a PPD wreath, and we have a little matrix present that's going to so go sit in the yard. And this kind of fills up all of this controller because that's what the, that's what the prop count and the outputs are. But now if we put the matrix on the controller on port 9, now, what you're going to notice is on the Falcon uh, F16 V5, it's going to extrapolate this uh, continued output to port 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, all the way down. And it's going to try to say, oh, you can use this controller. But what if you don't have a, um, a smart receiver that will allow you to do that? Or you don't have an expansion board that allows you to do that? So let's start by taking this off of the controller. I'm going to close out the uh, preview screen. Let's go ahead and click Save. And I'm going to go back to the Layout tab. So next what we want to do is we want to make sure that this controller has a set start channel. And to do that, I'm going to change the controller selection manually in XLights to use a start channel. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And this should kind of lock in our start channel for this prop. We're going to now create a second model, a second matrix that's going to look identical, but it's only going to be half as big as this matrix. We're going to call this what's known as a shadow model. And a shadow model is fantastic. They help us with so many little specifics. I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to create the matrix and I'm going to build the matrix the same way that I built the matrix up above. So it's a little more realistic. So this matrix is going to have eight outputs, it's going to have 200 pixels per output, and I'm going to fold it, or I'm going to use strings per string twice. I'm going to fold it twice. So there we go. It's going to go over, and it's, now keep in mind, you have to build them identically. This one is a horizontal matrix. It starts at the top left. You can see that as I zoom in here, the little turquoise color there. And this one is exactly the same. So it starts at the top left. It's a horizontal matrix, and uh, it starts at the top left corners. If you, as long as you follow that, you should be in good shape. We're going to Control C, copy, and we're going to Control C or Control V, paste, and poof, there we've got a second matrix that is in succession after the other one. We're going to manually configure both of these props to have the same channels existing between the two props as the matrix has. 
So we're going to, again, we're going to look at the matrix. The matrix says, hey, we're starting at channel number 4133. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, I'm going to go and change from controller, hopefully to you use start channel. And I'm going to come down here and 4133, we're going to use the same number, 4133. Boom. So now they are both starting at the same location. We have this option down here. It says overlap checks enabled. This is to help us identify to see if props have a shared channel. So when you are doing a shadow model, it's going to share channels. So if you click on the main matrix, this is going to light up red. It's going to say, hey, these two models have the same channel. Are you sure that's what you want? Now, this isn't an error. This can be an error in the check sequence, but you're intentionally doing this, and it's for a good reason. So now, I, since these are lit, lit up, that means that tells me this is assigned to uh, catch the same channels as this. Now what I need to do is I need to look at my matrix number two, and we can rename this. We can call this matrix shadow, or I like to say matrix one upload because it reminds me that I'm not sequencing on the prop, I'm actually uh, uploading. This is only for upload use. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here. We'll call this matrix two upload. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at the end of this model here, what my end channel is, which is eight, nine, three, two, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this to you start channel and eight, nine, three, three. So I'm adding one channel to it. And if I go ahead and click on it now, after you, after you enter it, you've got two props that are uh, taking up the same channels. And notice the start channel. Notice the start channel here, 4133. And it's the same as this start channel here. And notice the end channel, 13732. And the last channel here is 13732. I'm going to give it, see how it says shadow model down here for? I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, the shadow model for matrix. And this tells x hey, this is, this is a shadow model. And I'm going to assign them both to that matrix. If we come over here, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna grab these. And I'm gonna pull them off the screen. Cause guess what? I'm not worried about sequencing on those. Now I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to open up my controller by double clicking on it to the visualizer, and I'm gonna grab my matrix one upload, and I'm gonna put it on port nine. Now I have port nine through sixteen only selected, and that's it. And I can go ahead and close this, save this. I can go into my genius controller and now I can manually pull over my matrix upload to and there is my first ports. So if we click on these you can see that we do have connection to the Falcon, that's the bottom controller and if we click on the other one, the, uh, the experience lights, that's the top one here, you can see right there is our connection, the green LED. I'll click on the other one, you can see we are definitely connected. Okay, so now let's go and verify that we have nothing on our controller outputs. Because I want you to see that if we if if we click on any uh, on the controllers and we open them up and we are connected to them, there's there's the Falcon. If we go to the pixel outputs, so here's outputs uh, settings, and we go to the pixel outputs, you can see there's nothing on port one through sixteen, nothing at all, and. It, likewise, if we uh, go back in here, we click on the Genius Controller and click Open. Uh, if we go to the Output page, you can see here there's nothing on anything, the first 16 uh, controllers. So we're good. We're in good shape. I'll put this off to the other screen here. Let's go ahead, click the Upload Output button. And what Xlights is doing now is it's uploading the pixel ports. It says the Falcon uploads complete. I'll go ahead and select the genius. We'll do the upload output. There's a bulk one that you can do, and it says, um, and it says those experience lights board is uh, the experience lights outputs uploads are complete. So let's go back in, and we we let's just refresh the screen. So here's your Falcon. We'll go ahead and click the refresh button, and poof, there you can see 
all of your controller uh, uh, props on there. The 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 wreath, you have the uh, the PPD wreath, you have the fan flake arch, and you have the medium matrix uh, bow present, and then you have half of your matrix, which is exactly how we set everything up. If we come over here to the genius, we can go ahead and hit the re reload page, and now you can see we have matrix two upload string one. So if we double check we can go back in and we can say look here's your start channel 8932 that should be the same as our second matrix over here 8932 that's our second matrix panel that's the start channel and now we've successfully uploaded to a controller for one prop between two different controllers using two shadow models and you guys now should be able to just select this model right here and begin sequencing on it. Now, I really highly recommend that if you're going to split between two controllers, then what you need to do is you need to make sure that there are no breaks in, in the channel layout. So you're doing the matrix at the end of your uh, setup, meaning here, uh, here I'll bring this back in. The, this is the last eight here. Are, are sitting here. That's I suggest put it at the end of the controller and that way it'll carry on to the first of the next controller. That That's the best way I've come up with uh, kind of figuring it out. If we come in and we sequence on these we can start a new sequence. We can do uh, animation done. Um, I'm just going to sequence on the matrix only. Let's do T for timing and go find our matrix. There's the matrix right here. Uh, if we put the uh, butterfly effect and uh, that's our butterfly effect and then we bring up the house preview what you're going to see is you're going to see the uh, matrix effect is actually split between those two panels but because we built them identically because we built them the same that those effects that you put on here are going to send the data out to the correct top and the correct bottom matrix and that should be the solution for your setup if this is what you're trying to do well guys, I hope this video was helpful, informative, and you learned something brand new that maybe you had no idea that you could do with x Slice and uploading to your controllers and getting things rolling for your holiday show. So it's a really simple way to think about doing uh, how you need to do what you need to do. And uh, it makes it really easy to set it up either on the tree or on the matrix. You just have to make sure that you start with the start channel in mind and you're building your uh, segments for where one segment's going to sit and be plugged in versus which controller the second segment's going to be plugged into. And a little thinking, a little planning, and a little bit of extra work that you put into it is really going to go a long way. So we hope this video was helpful, informative. If you liked it, give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget the bell for notifications. You never want to miss a Twinkle Tip Friday video. They're awesome to give you the information to help you become better using the software and X-Lights and understanding the RGB hobby and how you do special things that are here. If you have suggestions for videos, please put them down below. And also, if you have uh, comments, please share them because we're happy to answer questions. If you are really stuck on some things, you can join us on Tuesday nights and jump in our Zoom room. Every, two, every week we do a, a webinar or a get together in our Tuesday Zoom class. You can click the link down below to learn more about that. And uh, if you appreciate the things we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, please consider becoming a PPD Sequence Club member. It would be awesome to have you join the club, and we do one awesome sequence new to the store every month, but we give you three choices, and they change every month. Thank you again, folks. We'll see you next time, and as always, goodbye for now. It is Friday. It's time for the weekend. If you are all excited, just put your hands up with me. It's Friday. We all love our Fridays, right? That, I bumped the microphone. I can't bump the microphone. Don't bump the microphone.